Welcome to lesson number one on polynomial functions. So in this unit, we're going to be using long division and different types of division. Another one, we're going to be using a synthetic division to uh, divide polynomial expressions and uh, also to factor polynomial expressions. So a lot of this is going to be a review from grade 10 and also uh, pre-calculus 11 and some other um, units in pre-calculus 12. So uh, when we're looking at a polynomial function, a polynomial function is in this really confusing form shown to you here. Now, um, when we look at actual examples of polynomial functions, it'll probably make a lot more sense. Um, however, there's, there's four different things that are included in a polynomial function. First, we have coefficients. And again, don't look to this example. Look to the one we're going to do uh, in class example number one. Um, we also have the highest power of a function or a polynomial function of x. And uh, this is going to be called the leading coefficient. Uh, the leading coefficient, sorry, is attached to the highest power of the function. We also have the independent term x, which uh, does not have a variable on it. This is known as the constant term. So uh, if, if you just have a value like um, down here 5, that would be our constant term. And then finally, the value of our polynomial function, which is known as the degree of the polynomial. This is going to be um, <clears throat> the highest exponent on our polynomial function. So first of all, consider the, the polynomial f of x is equal to x to the power of 4 plus 7x cubed minus 8x squared plus 5. We want to state the degree of the polynomial. So first of all, we, the highest exponent here is 4, so this would have a degree of 4. The leading coefficient, um, right now, the, the coefficient in front of this highest degree, we don't have a, a coefficient, which means we, we uh, have a coefficient of 1. And then finally, the constant term. This is the term in our function that doesn't have an, a variable attached to it, so that would be 5. Now, we want to be able to recognize a polynomial function. So expressions that contain roots of, roots of variables, negative or fractional powers of a variable, or any coefficient, which is a non-real number, are not polynomial functions. So if it has a root, a negative or fractional power of a variable, or a coefficient that is not a real, that is non-real, a not real number, then they are not polynomial functions. So for example, this is not a polynomial function, and it's because it has this fractional power. Um, this one here is also no, because it has a negative exponent, so not a polynomial function. This one here is a polynomial function, even though it has a square root. Um, this square root is not attached to an exponent, so it is a polynomial function. Um, f of x is equal to uh, 5x cubed, this one, no, because this square root also, it, it includes the exponent here. Um, <clears throat> this one here, I know it, it, it kind of looks confusing, so 5x cubed, it looks very similar to this one above. Uh, so 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 4, this actually is a polynomial function. And the reason this is a polynomial function is because this can be kind of broken down, right? If you have uh, the square root of 3x squared, you could say that's the square root of 3x times x squared, which would be the square root of 3 times the square root of x squared. And the square root of x squared is just x. And so this actually is a polynomial function. And then finally, this is not a polynomial function because we have a square root of a negative number. And so that would result in a non-real number here. In this next example, we want to state the degree of the leading coefficient and the constant term of each polynomial function. Sometimes um, a polynomial, polynomial function can be disguised. And uh, what this means 
is that it might not be in order or it might be factored like this, but that doesn't mean it's not a polynomial function and the certain components of our polynomial fun function could themselves be hidden. So for example, um, the degree of this polynomial function is not two, it's actually three. And the leading coefficient is not 34, it's actually negative 25. The constant term here is gonna be this constant term here, which is negative 39. With this example over here, we'd have to expand. So when I expand this expression, I'd have to multiply using my distributive method like that, and then these two as well. But first, 5x times 2x would give me 10x squared. 5x plus 7 would give me uh, 35x. Minus 2x would give me 33x. And then negative 1 times 7 is going to be negative 7. So this has a degree of 2 right here. The leading coefficient is 10, and it has a constant of negative 7. In class example number four, we want to determine the degree, the leading coefficient, and the constant term without expanding. And then we want to verify the results in part one by expanding and simplifying the polynomial. So first of all, uh, let's, let's look at the degree of the polynomial. So without expanding, I know that I'm going to get x squared here. So if I were not to expand, I know that this is going to be x squared. And... I have another x squared term here that I would, I would have to multiply. And so x squared times x squared would be x times 4. With my leading coefficient, I would multiply 2 times 3 times 5. And this would be 2 times 3, 3 squared. So 2 times 3 squared times 5. Uh, so that would be uh, 3 squared is 9 times 5 is 45 times 2 is 90. And then the constant term um, without expanding, I would have uh, 2 would be negative 2, uh, or sorry, neg 2 times negative 1 squared would be 2. So 2 times negative 1 squared times 1 would be 2. And then we want to actually expand and simplify the polynomial. So if I were to expand this, then I'm going to get 2 times 3x minus 1 squared is 9x squared minus uh, 3, 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x times 2 would be negative 6x and then plus 1 multiplied by 5x squared minus x plus 1. If I expand, then... I'm going to be using my distributive method, which would give me 45x to the power of 4 minus 9x cubed plus 9x squared minus 6x times 5x is 30x cubed um, plus 6x squared minus 6x plus 5x squared minus x plus 1. When I simplify this, this is giving me 2 times 45x to the power of 4 minus 39x cubed, combining like terms, plus 20x squared minus 7x plus 1. And simplifying that, I'm going to distribute 2 into everything here, so that's going to be 90x to the power of 4 minus 78x cubed plus 40x squared minus 14x plus 2. And so here I have my, my degree is 4, my leading coefficient is 90, and my constant term is 2. So if we can cons consider the polynomial function p of x is equal to 7, explain why the polynomial function p of x is equal to 7 has a degree of 0. Well, it has a degree of 0, so p of x uh, to the power of 7. 
so we could write this as um, p to the power of uh, or p of x is equal to seven x to the power of zero. So the reason we would say it has a degree of zero is because remember x to the power of zero is just one, um, and so if this x to the power of zero is equal to and actually x to the power of zero is equal to one, then that would be seven times one, which is still just equal seven. So when it's just a constant term, we would just say that the, um, the degree is zero. And explain why this type of function is called a constant function. Well, no matter what you do, no matter what your value of x, it's not gonna change, it's all, the value is always gonna be the same. Um, so if, you're, if your input, if you won't have an input really, or if your input is always just one, then your graph is gonna remain constant. Uh, next, we're going to classify polynomial functions. So we can classify it by terms. And so whether it's a monomial, a binomial, or a trinomial. So a monomial means it has one term. A binomial means it has two terms. And a trinomial means it has three terms. Polynomials with four or more terms, we just call a polynomial. We can also uh, define it by degree. And so if it has a... Um, a degree of zero, we would describe it as being constant. If it has uh, a degree of one, then it would be linear. A degree of two, we would call it a quadratic function. A uh, degree of three, we would call it cubic. And then a degree of four, we would call it uh, quartic, and then etc. cetera. So uh, P of X is equal to C, that's constant. So the degree is zero and we could call it constant. a of x, this has a degree of 1, and so this is linear. This is a degree of 2, this is quadratic. Degree of 3, that means it's cubic, and degree of 4 would be quartic. So research the names for polynomials with degrees 5 through 10. I'll let you do that on your own time, but uh, 5 would be quintic. Six would be hexic or sextic. Uh, degree of seven, septic. Degree eight, octic. Nine, nonic. And ten, decic. So I'll get you to do this part. For this next example, um, you just got to, for an integral, real, and rational, just read the description on the previous page, on page uh, 289. But we want to write a polynomial that satisfies all these conditions. So first of all, I have a P of X, and if it's a trinomial, it has to have three terms. So I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna go X, and then um, plus X, and then minus two as an example. And so if it's quartic, then the, it has to have an exponent of four, and then um, if it's an integral exponent, it just means that it can't have, and it has to have integers representing all my coefficients. And so that's the only thing that we would have to include there. In class example number eight, I have P of X is equal to negative three X squared plus eight, AX plus eight and P of one, which is equal to negative nine. We wanna find the value of A. So uh, first of all, we're gonna be finding the value of A if X is equal to one. And so if x is equal to one, and that's in this, this expression, p of x is equal to negative nine, then we're gonna combine this information with this information here. So what we're gonna say is that negative nine is equal to negative three, and x is one, so one squared, plus a times one plus eight. So negative nine is equal to negative three times one squared, which would just be negative three. A times one is just A and plus eight. Now, if we combine our like terms, negative three and positive eight, then negative nine is equal to five plus A. And combining like terms again, we just subtract five from both sides of my expression and a is equal to negative 14.